pretty sure what I'll be doing next is <laughs> the bleeding process, bleeding of the fuel that is. Um, now, um, as I showed before, I've got um, the new fuel filter there, I've got diesel in there, I just put the battery in, uh, I put uh, everything in the, in the correct uh, polarity. So now what I've got to do is spin the engine. Um, I don't have the fuel rail on right now. I'll just put you here. Um, so I'll, I'll get myself organised and I'll come back. Okay, I'm just going to spin the engine. See if that works. I'm just going to take the decompression tab off. seems to uh, flow fuel all the way up there. Just going to crack this. Put this on. And each one was pumping, so um, both uh, plungers there are, are working, I'd say. I'm not sure how well, but. These are 17 millimeter. They just nip them up a little bit. Okay, I believe the procedure is to open this little one here. This is 12 millimeter. Okay, a bit of air escaping. Now I can see on my fuel level here, there's a bit of air in there. So just crank it a little bit. And there's obviously a problem with the starter. Okay, well, um, the starter motor is not uh, kicking in properly, so I'm just going to pull it off. It's pretty easy to get to at the moment, just uh, two 12mm bolts there. Yeah, I'm just going to pull it out, have a look. It's been sitting for a while, could have something stuck somewhere, so give it a quick uh, clean up and then see if we could kick it over. Just uh, put you here. Okay. The starter motor's out. It feels pretty tight. So it might be a bit of junk in there. There was a little bit of brownish stuff in there, so I'll pull pull it apart a little bit, clean it up. That's the best I can do. If it's uh, totally stuffed, I'll have to get another one. But we'll see how we go. Okay, the starter has a problem. Um, I've pulled it apart and I've cleaned it up and um, inside it looked uh, fairly clean, fairly smooth, nothing popping off. A little bit of corrosion um, where uh, these mated, nothing serious but I've cleaned it up. Now uh, the, uh, the motor works, it turns, the solenoid uh, clicks on the uh, or throws out the uh, um, the gear but it looks like it's not um, powering through the uh, relay here the motor uh, so w when when this kicks in um, I'd say the um, the contacts in there uh, are not very good and uh, it's not throwing the amperage um, I'll show you quickly what it does Again, it's going to be a bit of a pain with one hand, but a 
goes very slow so uh, it's not the motor because if I uh, take this directly to the motor Okay, the motor's got plenty of power. So basically, it's the contact inside the solenoid. So it needs a new solenoid. But uh, to get it started, um, I think I'm going to use a bit of a workaround. I've got one of these lying around. It's the old style uh, starter solenoids on the like a 12 horsepower Briggs and Stratton's that didn't have the throw-out solenoid on the starter. So I'm going to use this solenoid to give it the same signal I give this solenoid. Uh, well, anyway, back at it today. Now uh, I worked out that the uh, solenoid is not switching power from the battery to the motor inside, so something is loose. This is very loose here. Um, so um, I'm going to be using a separate solenoid to feed the power to the motor. Um, the only issue I'm having right now is that I can't connect um, the, the same wire to both relays because they'll kick in at both at the same time and this plunger I think has to go first and then the motor has to go second so it's not, a, not working perfectly so I've got to trigger the relay separate this relay uh, separate I've tried to put a wire between here and here to see if it would trigger after it's fed the power from the second relay or second uh, solenoid but it didn't work very well anyway major electrical issues just took this out a little bit um, if you don't understand what's going on join the club <laughs> anyway what, I, what I'm going to try and do right now is put a separate switch for this relay so Let's see if we can get this thing started. G'day, a quick update, uh, now uh, I've set up a temporary solenoid to run the motor on the uh, on the starter, so when I uh, turn it on to make it work, I've got to press this button to throw the solenoid and then this button to, to make the, the motor run. Anyway, um, I've gone past that a little bit, uh, it still didn't start, so I... Uh, uh, cleaned up a few little things um, Firstly, I had a leak inside there um, happened to be a, a Little o-ring that fits at the end of the uh, So you pull this out after you take the, the these off and uh, you put an o-ring there and uh, it, it sealed it up fairly well Just be careful. There's uh, a spring and a couple of bits in there that can fly off But it wasn't too hard Anyway, uh, as you can see, this is not the way it's normally set up. I've actually pulled out the uh, the injectors because I wasn't sure if they were firing properly, and I've uh, uh, I haven't cleaned them yet. I've, I've simply just uh, turned this around so that I could plug the injectors here. I've bled the fuel, and I wanted to see how the uh, injectors are firing, and uh, I'll show you. I mean, this is, this is just, I suppose, a quick little test to see if they're working. And there is a suspect uh, solid um, injector, so I'll show you. I'll just turn it over.
anyway we can see that this one has a fairly consistent spray and this one just goes all over the place so uh, this was on the number one cylinder and this was on the number two cylinder so I know this is quite quite good this one seems to be dripping still we'll pull it apart or I don't know I'll, I'll have to work out uh, to look after these things and um, see if we can give it some proper fuel I've just discovered another problem and I'll show you uh, I've got uh, this little compression tester set and uh, while I've got the uh, injectors out I uh, thought I'd do a, a bit of a compression test uh, now um, this has got a uh, rubber hand so I'm just going to place it in there and hold it down um, and take as much of the pressure as I can it'll be a good indication anyway so we'll go from there mark on cylinder number one well way over 230 and I couldn't hold all the pressure <laughs> so we'll give it another go So there's definitely more compression on number two than there is on number one. We'll have to investigate that. Mm -hmm. 